Welcome, welcome everyone. It is Monday night again and I've just realised my headphones are missing. Um, I've got to back up. Uh, but they're big. They're going to be like this. They're my podcasting headphones. So I'll plug them in. There we go. And hope that you can hear me because I can't hear me now. So it's just easier if I can't hear the background. Welcome. It's Monday. It's been freezing. We went away for the weekend. That was pretty exciting. It was nice to have a change of scenery. Um, and yeah, this morning in Brisbane, it was six degrees. Um, so I can imagine if you're further south, it's even cooler. Um, the days are still beautiful. So we're very lucky. And I hope wherever you are, uh, you're safe and you're well and everything's going great. So got a lot to get through as usual. We've got the questions. We've got the um, winners of Transformation Tuesday. God, that went well. I was so excited by that. We had some really um, quite heartfelt sharing, which I really is what I'm looking for in the group. So thank you so much for being so vulnerable and quite inspiring, sharing your stories um, of, you know, where it started for you and where it's gotten to. So there's some incredible um, transformations, which is why we call it Transformation Tuesday. Um, so that's great. And then we've also got um, the winners from last week's uh, foods, 50 Foods Challenge, a couple of those to announce. And then, of course, the next um, task for this week and on we go with the 50 foods. How are you going? Hello, Erin's always first. I think that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how, and there's 11 of you there, I can see. I think that's 11. Could you just let me know if you're here in the comments box because interactive is also very helpful to me. Thanks, Karen. Hi, how are you? Um, and it does, you know, it makes it interesting for everybody. So share with us as much as you can um, about your week last week and your foods. Did you find you were meeting 50 foods quickly or is it taking you longer than you thought it might as well, hi Sue? Um, so we'll get started with, um, well, I'm going to throw it upside down, which I'm doing quite a lot of things like that lately, just trying to mix up from being a bit boring and stuck in routine. So um, I've got question time on the screen, but I'm going to change my mind about that and I'm going to do the winners. Um, <laughs> I've been playing with the software too over the last week or so. So today I'll announce first up the winners of the orange food game last week where you had to put in the comments um, five orange foods. So uh, Wendy Brindley won one prize. I'll tell you what the prize is in a moment. She provided six um, and we only asked for five, so that was pretty cool. And Karen Kemp was the second winner. So um, you guys have won, drum roll, um, a BN Multi Meal Planner Magnet goes on the fridge and has a shopping list attached to it. So you can list, because I know how you like to list foods, obviously. I'll give you the opportunity to list your foods every week. So um, pop it on the fridge and it's a great menu planner and shopping guide as well. So stay tuned. I think you might have seen this week's colour is yellow and the game is already up. Um, so I'm going to talk about yellow foods and then I'll do the questions. So I had lots of tabs open and someone's been in here using my computer and closed a couple of them, but that's okay. So why, I'm going to ask you guys first, because I'm trying to get you to participate with me, still on pre-hop, <laughs> so no 50 foods for me. Tomorrow is your surgery, Karen. I hope it all goes well. Um, where are you having your operation? Tell me that. And also tell me... Um, what you think you might get out of eating a yellow coloured food. Does anyone know what the active ingredients are? <laughs> oh, that's nice to win something just the day before you go in. So yay me. Uh, good on you. Um, yellow foods. So why would you eat something like corn, banana, 
yellow capsicum, lemon, um, maybe golden delicious apple. Have you tried the little yellow tomatoes? They're quite nice too to just but they've got a slightly different flavour, but they also just bring something different to the plate. And I think that's what we're looking for when you don't get too much food. So to make it beautiful and make it quite a special process, I think is a really important thing to actually start to think about. Um, so yellow foods, the yellow is the colour of sunshine and happiness, which is a good way to start the week. Um, the, the actual um, actives or the um, plant nutrients that make those foods yellow are uh, carotenoids which are similar to what makes foods go orange um, and also bioflavonoids and they function as antioxidants so a lot of the color in your food is about antioxidant which um, if you think of oxidizing you would think of like a rusty piece of metal where water has gotten in and oxygen and actually destroyed the structures of something so very much within the body that same thing can happen um, oxidation and we try and avoid it because it can be um, cancer causing so lots of fruit and vegetables lots of water um, that won't make you rust um, but the colors are what bring in that um, benefit for you as well so yellow also um, fruits like banana which is rich in potassium um, the dandelion flower, the yellow flower, you can use, um, that's actually very good for your liver. Don't just eat it, but there's a way to make tea out of it. Um, the dandelion tea is a nice swap for um, coffee. It's not the same, but if you're trying to reduce your caffeine intake, you can swap in a dandelion tea, and it's very good for liver cleansing as well. Um, so it also helps stomach health um, well, foods like lemons and mangoes are rich in vitamin C, so they're all in the yellow category as well. Um, and also bone and joint health are um, enhanced by regular consumption of yellow foods. So again, we're talking blood pressure and cholesterol. So the carotenoids and the um, yellow bioflavonoids are very good for your blood vessels and your cardiovascular system as well. So um, looking at, I'll post some more information on the benefits of yellow. How are we going with your answers? Beta carotene, good one, yep. Um, oh, you're in Adelaide, Karen. Um, and yes, yellow foods are good for the skin, um, also with the carotenoids and um, stuff to do with vitamin A, generally skin related. And also something that we can fall um, low in if you're, you've had the surgery as well. So that's yellow. Um, the other thing um, I wanted to do was announce um, what we're doing on the podcast. I'm out of order because the actual questions that I need are on a document that someone has closed and I need to open it. Um, so I'm going to talk about the Australian Weight Loss Surgery podcast. And uh, this week we've got a success story, which will be great. Um, it's one of our the members of our group and I've been watching his process progress closely and I've just been really impressed by um, how committed and how um, much he's pulled on all sorts of resources to really get to the seat of um, managing his health and well-being with firstly weight loss surgery but also really everything else that needed to come with that to get such a fast and amazing transformation. So um, Charlie, I don't know if you're listening, but thank you for your time and we'll post the podcast. Um, it'll come up in the next day or two on the news and also um, on the Weight Loss Surgery podcast website. So the podcast website is awlspodcast.com um, and you'll find all of the podcasts there. There's lots of different interviews and um, all sorts of uh, some of them I'm doing by myself, just information on like a certain nutrient or a, um, maybe hair loss or B12 deficiency, that sort of thing. So lots of different relevant things after um, surgery. 
and also um, lots of interesting people. So the last couple I've done have been with fertility specialists, so a fertility endocrinologist and also a um, fertility dietitian as well, a Melanie McGrice from Melbourne. And then next I'm doing one of the professors who does um, quite complex bariatric surgeries. I'll talk with him. I'm also doing one on pain with um, Ananda Marnie. She does um, she got a master's in pain management, so helping patients who've got chronic pain and a lot of patients need the surgery because of the um, uh, chronic pain or injury or accident, that sort of thing. So there's lots you can do with that as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, has anyone seen many of the podcasts? Have you? Are oh, you great? Thanks, Sue's. Sue's been listening. She's a good student. I'll post up the website again at the end as well. Um, and does anyone, uh, did anyone make something special out of their orange foods last week? I saw there was one post of a beautiful um, orange Thai fish soup, which looked pretty spectacular. Um, and it was actually um one of the husbands made it. So you can always share with the family which colour we need this week and put your order in for a meal that suits you. So um, here's my new banner. I should have put it up before. Ta-da! This week on the Weight Loss Surgery Podcast. Um, so questions, we had a list of questions. Um, give me one second. I, I'm just struggling with this and the more I talk, the more I'm not getting anything done. It's a bit frustrating. Um, I'm looking for my questions sheet and it's vanished. And so if you've got any questions, can you chuck a question up in the comments? I think Erin had a question last week. Someone was asking about headaches. When do the headaches stop? Um, and the headaches can be from a number of different causes. Um, so it could be that you're detoxing from caffeine if you've been in hospital and you haven't had, you know, the regular kind of level of caffeine that you have normally. Um, could also be that you're dehydrated and I would really look at that um, early on. The main reason patients are re-hospitalised just after surgery is because of dehydration so if you're feeling headache you're really weak and tired or even stiff and sore like if you've got sore joints or um, your muscles hurt when you're contracting them they feel crampy and stiff often that is an indicator of um, electrolyte imbalance as well so that is led to by dehydration. So headaches can be a number of things. Could be that you've just had surgery and you are um, flushing out of a lot of the drugs that they've given you in the hospital. Um, it could be constipation. That can happen. Dehydration, constipation, and a lot of the pain-killing medications will um, dehydrate you. Um, so, and bind you up, constipate you as well. So it's looking at really kind of getting your um, body moving again, um, deep, um, releasing and moving things through. So headache could also be that you've been um, lying in bed in a hospital <laughs> and um, you have got stiff muscles or you've just been in surgery and they put you in some weird positions sometimes while they're moving you around. So I can't say when the headaches would stop, but um, it's more about looking at what the cause of the headache is. Is it tension? Is it toxicity? Is it dehydration? Um, they're all questions to ask. So that's the answer to my headache question. Um, Lisa was asking if she's if it's normal to feel sick after most meals and water seven weeks post-op. I've been finding this in the last few weeks. Um, I don't know if it's normal. Feeling sick is also something that we need more information about. It could be that you're feeling heavy or it could be nausea and, you know, gurgling, feeling like you'd need to be actually physically sick. Um, 
something like that, if it hasn't existed before and it's something that's changed, I would always call your clinic and get them to um, have a chat to you about it just to make sure that nothing has changed. Um, seven weeks post-op, you should be kind of on your way out of feeling that kind of um, uneasiness, but it's a time still to be quite careful um, and also just be in touch with um, your healthcare professionals if you find anything's changed or it's something that you're not quite sure about. So Lisa, I'd recommend just um, popping in to or giving them a call and letting them know what's happening. Um, also, um, Ashley was asking about being seven weeks post-op and struggling with which vitamins to take. So let me tell you what to take. Um, so, and I'm also losing a lot of my hair. So seven weeks post-op, there's um, early after the surgery, there can be expectation for hair loss and it varies, it's quite individual. Um, and early on after surgery, it can just be due to the shock of the surgery. Um, so it's looking at that. It's also a time where there's not much nutrition on board. So it's making sure you have got the correct nutrients on board. Um, we've got a fantastic hair loss article and it was done by the Bariatric Times. And then I've condensed that into one of our flyers. So it's research-based information on what hair loss is and how you can um, help it. It really speaks to taking your multivitamin, a bariatric multivitamin like BN, um, every day, twice a day because you need to make sure you're reaching your um, needs for B12, iron, copper, um, your protein needs need to be met. Um, so really nutritionally you have to have all your ducks in a row, making sure that you're um, during that post-op stage, seven weeks post-op, it is a time where you can miss out on some of your um regular nutrition when you have a look at how limited your diet can be. So at that point, your supplements are what's going to get you through. Um, hair also relies on protein. So making sure that whatever the guidelines are that your dietitian has set, that you're meeting your protein needs as well. Um, and yeah, generally hair loss in the first six months, if they say can be expected. After six months, it's definitely a nutritional imbalance. So it's time to have a look at that. Um, so that is my answer. I'm going to do a just a single podcast this week on hair loss and post it up because it's such a question everybody's asking. Um, I think that's all of the questions for this week. Does anyone have any other questions they've posted while I've been busy? Pumpkin soup we had in the orange this week for food. Um I can't find in if the podcast I put in AWLS. Um, I'll post the link. It's awlspodcast.com, but I'll stick it um, are there. Sue's come to the rescue and posted it for you, so that's good. Uh, so we're going to now look at the next item on my agenda, my little list, and I think I've covered most things. Um, this week's task, let's have a look at that. Ta -da! <laughs> of course, is to combine some yellow foods in your diet. Um, and let's go with yellow capsicum, really, really high in vitamin C. All the um, peppers and the capsicums are higher in vitamin C than any orange you'll ever eat. And they're pretty versatile, so they can go in... Um, all sorts of different dishes. The yellow ones are lovely as a salad, and I know it's probably not salady weather at the moment, but you can also in the winter time stuff them. That's pretty nice. Um, make up your normal either like a chili con carne or a bolognese sauce or something like that, and then just chop the top off the yellow pepper and fill it up and um, just bake it and then pop some cheese on the top. And that's a significant sized meal, so it might even do you for two meals. So yellow uh peppers or capsicum i don't know what you want to call it hello alex thank you for turning up um also let the squash you know the yellow squash that look like they're from the zucchini family i think they get a bit neglected because they're if you cook them too long or you boil them they go a bit wet and mushy but um 
we we'll see if we can come up with some interesting recipes for the squash. And also let's go with lemons because it's winter and they're so high in vitamin C. And if you can include the skin of the lemon, you're doing such wonderful things for your cardiovascular system. Um, and the strength and integrity of your blood vessels are really reliant on the bioflavonoids in the skin of the citrus peel. Um, so things like hemorrhoids, varicose veins, um, cold hands and feet, that sort of thing, it's all about those small blood vessels that all get nourished by those beautiful bioflavonoids in the citrus peel. A friend of mine made me some jam recently and she'd put big chunks of peel in as the sweetener and oh, it was so yummy and um, they were like peeled off with a normal size peeler. So when I was using the jam, I was just spreading the peel on the top and it was just such a beautiful addition. So it's had that sweet and tart mixture, which I love too. Um, lemon water every morning, Sue Reed has, which is a great way to start the day. Did you know for the best benefit, you need about 100 mils of um, lemon juice? Uh, so it's it's always going to help you, but it's also um, from a therapeutic dose point of view, we talk about that, um, it's 100 mils, which I don't think I could do that first thing in the morning. Does anyone tried um, the apple? Someone was asking in the group about apple cider vinegar tablets um, and also overall apple cider vinegar. Um, it's something to go easy with if you are going to introduce it for increasing that um, hydrochloric acid or stomach secretions. Um, it is a good thing in the morning like Sue does in warm water, just a little bit of apple cider vinegar, but do start it very, very gently and really do it under guidance. But um, it is a lot to do with digestion and assimilation and that sort of thing as well. So has anyone got any other questions? And no, um, 13, good stuff. I think I'm done. I've covered all the prizes. So if I announce that you've won a prize, could you post underneath, sorry, could you email us support at bnmulti.com and just um, let us know that you won a prize and what it was for and just give us your address and we'll send you out a prize. So next week there'll be more giveaways. Um, and also some other things happening in the group as well. So I'm going to leave it there, and I'll see you next Monday. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.